Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. It is 10 a.m. It is Monday. It is November 5th. We're getting ready to host a Friendsgiving on Wednesday. And I thought I would pretend that this is like the Monday before Thanksgiving. So if today is the Monday before Thanksgiving, what you guys are going to need to start to do is... Make sure that you have all of your vegetables. Go out, go grocery shopping, get your vegetables. Get any last-minute ingredients that you're going to need for the perfect Thanksgiving day, day that you're going to be hosting. Or if you're bringing a side dish, if you're going to your in-laws or you're going to your children's house and they're hosting their first Thanksgiving, bring any little incidentals that you may have forgotten about. Now, there are a few things that you're going to want to get ready on the Monday before. And I suggest cleaning your house on the Monday before Thanksgiving. Just give it the one silver dust, vacuum, mop if you need to. Make sure that your tablecloths are nice and clean, that they've been pressed. And have them at the ready. Also, make sure that your china and your, your glassware is all sparkling, put them through the dishwasher or hand wash them, make sure that they're dust free, put them safely away. And that's the Monday before. Now, since <clears throat> I'm doing a Thanksgiving Friendsgiving on a Wednesday versus a Thursday, I'm going to pretend that this is the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. So the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, you can actually start to get things ready. You can start baking your pies. If you're going to make more than, than one pie, I suggest today you get those done. Make your pumpkin pies. If you're serving apple pie, if you're serving other things, make sure that those are, are all ready. It's a little bit early to start doing the stuffing as well as the... Uh, <clears throat> any of the vegetables because you don't want them in the refrigerator for three days. But what you do want to make sure is if your turkey has been frozen and it's been defrosting in your refrigerator, turn it over. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Turn it over and make sure that it is starting to really defrost. You don't want a frozen bird or a surprise on Thursday. So make sure you do that today. Also, you are going to also definitely want to make room in your refrigerator for the, your pumpkin pies, for your appetizers, for your side dishes. Now, if you're going to be serving appetizers, depending on what type of an appetizer they are, you can start getting some of those things out of the way and get those ready. You can also now chop your celery, chop your your onions, and get those into containers so that they'll be ready for you on Thursday when you actually go ahead and use them. So that was just a tidbit from me t uh, today. I'm taking um, not necessarily today off, but I have a nail appointment in a couple of hours that I'm going to get ready for. So I'm not doing a lot of cooking today because I got uh, goulash that's still left over. So we'll probably have goulash for dinner tonight. So I'll be back in a bit or after I get my nails done and we'll see what I start doing today. I'm cooking with Joel. Okay, hi all, welcome to my kitchen. Today is Tuesday, it is November 7th. This of course is my lovable mouthpiece that would not stop barking because I just got home from volunteering at the food pantry. Anyway, I did film a segment yesterday and then uh, when I started to watch it before I even edited it, I, saw, I didn't end up doing anything yesterday, so. I'm going to pretend that today is the actual Tuesday before Thanksgiving, even though my Friendsgiving is going to be on Wednesday and not on Thursday. So, 
the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, you definitely want to start getting your pies made. And that's what we're going to do. Now, can I lay, lay, can I sit you down or are you going to be yuppity, yuppity, yuppity? This is my baby. By the way, for those of you wondering how my Pomeranian is, I have to take her to the vet tonight um, for a consultation and a follow-up. Uh, she's not doing all that well, so I'll keep you guys updated how she's doing. So, when I make my pumpkin pies, I buy um, the Libby's 100% pumpkin, and he's going to bark. He thinks it's time to eat, and it's only 3.30. So, when I buy my pumpkin, I buy the Libby's brand. Now, Libby's brand does make two versions of their pumpkin. They make their all-natural, no-preservative pumpkin, pure, um, pure pumpkin. This has no none of the spices added to it, so you have to add your own spices to this. The other version that they make actually has all of the spices in it for your pumpkin pies. Which one is better? It's up to you. I like using the plain pumpkin because then I can add the right amount of spices to it and I don't have to have pumpkin that already is, is spiced because sometimes they don't add enough spices or you like a little bit more in your pumpkin. And this is a really easy recipe. Um, this is a 29 ounce can. So this will make two pies. It will make two 10 inch pies, or uh, I'm sorry, it'll make two nine inch pies. So that's what we're going to do. And it's it takes one can, 29 ounces of the Libby's pumpkin, three cups or three cans of the carnation evaporated milk, one and a half cups of granulated sugar, four large eggs, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, and you want two unbaked nine inch pie doughs. So what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna put my grandmother's 10 inch. I have her nine inch, this makes, this recipe makes two nine inch pie crusts or one double pie crust. So what we need is we need two and a half cups of flour, three quarters cup of spray or shortening, one teaspoon of salt and three quarters of a teaspoon of baking powder and five tablespoons of cold water. Now, sometimes with the cold water, sometimes you would need to add more to it than five. That's just a rough idea. You'll know when you start to put your doughs, um, how your dough comes together. If you need to add more water, do that, but start with five teaspoons. Now, I'm gonna bring you guys over and like I said, I'm having company tomorrow for our friends giving. So I'm going to bring you guys over to the dining room and I still have to clean out the dining room. And the reason you're in the dining room is I have to get my pie plates out. And I know a lot of times we have talked about different pie plates. And these are actually not at all the ones that I want to use. So let me put those down. I've got to... Oh, sorry, Jasper. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I did not mean to kick you. The joys of having little doggies. Okay, and I'm going to show you a couple of options that you can think about when making pies. Actually, I'm going to bring all of my pie plates... And we're going to talk about pie plates. I'm going to set you guys down over by the window because it's a little bit brighter. And I won't have my back to you. I'm going to set up shot. So there we go. So I have four different, actually, I have five different pie plates right here. We're only going to be using two. And my favorites are these because if you look at the inside of it, it has the indentations for when you put the crust in 
it actually guides you of where to put your crimp, crimps in your cross. So you have nice cross. And these were my, my grandmother's. I cherish these because these are the ones that I use every year for Thanksgiving. Now, some of them are dirty, so they need to be hand-washed. You're going to want to make sure that they are fully hand-washed and fully dry. Now, I know we did, uh, when we did the peach pie, these pies, these kind of plates are better for apple, um, your peach, your fruit pies. These are, are what that is uh, good for. And if you're making an apple pie for Thanksgiving, this would be the perfect pie plate for that because it's deep and it, it holds a lot of filling. Now I have my stoneware pie and the same thing. This is really good for the fruit pies. And then I have one big round one. This is my 10 inch pie. I, uh, plate. Actually, this might be my nine. Yeah, this is a nine. Um, my ten inch are probably hidden because I don't make ten inch pies all that often. I apologize for the mouthpiece. He just is not going to stop until he gets fed. And I need to wait till at least four o'clock. I don't want to get him on a schedule where he's eating too early. So let's get into the dough portion of this recipe and I'm so sorry I shot it at you guys. So let me wash wash off these pie uh, plates. And of course pumpkin pie is, is usually the most served pie for the holidays, for the Thanksgiving holidays, although a lot of people have commented that they make um, both pumpkin and apple. I'm only making pumpkin because it's only the three of us for tomorrow. And this will also give us an extra um, piece of pie or pie as we get closer to the holidays. Now, since Thanksgiving falls two weeks from this Thursday, I'll be doing more pies the week of Thanksgiving. I have to bring two pumpkin pies and an apple pie uh, for, for dessert for to my son's house. And hoping that everything, he buys all the right ingredients because if he doesn't, we're just gonna be eating pie. Now I might film a little bit of the actual Thanksgiving Day meal, although I'm not the one that's going to be cooking. I'm going to be guiding my my son's girlfriend, Danielle, through um, making making the pies. I mean, not making the pies, making the meal. It'll be the first time she's ever done this kind of a, a, of a big cook for a large crowd. Okay, and I'm just getting my pipe my pipe plates uh, washed. Edward, calm yourself. Calm yourself, Butchki. 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 Yeah, you're full of love. We love you, but boy, can you get loud, Edward? Enough. Okay, now that I'm finished with that, let me wring out my washcloth or my dishcloth. I don't know if you guys call it a washcloth or a dishcloth. I kind of call it both. But I'm just going to wipe this down. All right, let's get into this recipe. <clears throat> now, for the spray... I'm going to put these off to the side because I know I'm not using those. For the spray, I'm going to use Crisco, but I'm not going to use just the ordinary Crisco. I'm going to use the butter-flavored Crisco. Ed, 
word. Enough. Ice, move. 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 Yep. Go upstairs. Go on. There you go. That's what he was barking at. He wanted to go upstairs. So, Crisco makes two different types of shortening. It makes a plain and then a butter flavor. And the butter flavor shortening is, is pretty good for pie crust. Now, this recipe is going to use three quarters of a cup. So, that's a half and a quarter for those of you that are new to mathematics. Or bad like me and, and it's been a while since you've been to school or you don't cook a lot. Now, once you open the Crisco, you should refrigerate it. And you want to monitor how long it stays in your refrigerator. Usually, open Crisco is good for a couple of months. And this is good until next uh, June, but it's it's opened. So we need two and a half cups of flour. And we're going to use all-purpose flour. So I'm going to set you guys on the table while I grab some of the ingredients that I need. And let me put that in there. So I'm going to grab out our... Actually, I'm going to keep my flour there for a second because what's happening now is the minute I move the flour, my cookbooks like to fall. So I'm going to put my cookbook right like that, and hopefully he won't, won't uh, fall, because I'm afraid that when these fall, they're going to they're gonna knock over. Actually, I should have thought about this a long time ago. Yeah, there we go. I think those will hold. It's just shifting order. I'm really, really, really liking my new kitchen layout. It seems to be really good for us. And if you're wondering what this is, that's the carrot cake. There's one small piece. My husband and I have pretty much eaten all of the carrot cake. And it turned out really, really good. I have one lady say that she just went out and bought herself a bunt cake pan and, and was wondering what cakes to do. Well, we're going we're gonna to discuss cakes probably after Thanksgiving because I don't want to have too much sweets in the house. But we're probably going to do a chocolate cake coming up. We're definitely going to do a rum cake for the holidays. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to get my food processor because we're going to do this in the food processor. Edward, enough. So, what I learned... Oh, my goodness. Okay, my books on the lower shelf fell off. So, I'm going to move you guys over here for a second. Oh, when I pick up my books, unfortunately, some of my books are so old that they're just falling apart. And luckily, none of my drugs were underneath. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to move, bring our flour and our sugar over. Jasper, you keep getting in my way, my love. I love you, but and you're in the way, and I don't want to kick you. You might be hearing Kona upstairs. He's been in a snit for the last day and a half. He thinks he wants to come out of his cage, and I had a heck of a time this morning getting him back into his cage. So, if you have a food processor, and I actually need to move you guys over. Oh my goodness, this is a 15-minute video so far. I'm going to stop the video for a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> 